there's one for the outtakes. Oh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good day, everyone. Welcome to the Outer Belt Podcast. Uh, we've got with you, I've got with me tonight, your host, Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Hi, Vince. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm doing... Okay, enough of that. Hey, and there's our producer, Jerry Bear, over there as well. Jerry, how are you today? I am doing good. Good, how are good. You? I'm doing great, thanks. Anything exciting happen to you today? Not today, Not no. today. Yesterday? Yesterday, I had a lot happen. Yeah? Tell yeah. me about it. We've got plenty of time. So, I'm pissed. I'm baffled that Acura does not put spare tires in their vehicles. They got to save that weight so that thing can go fast, fast, fast. I had a flat tire yesterday. <sighs> had to no get one towed. likes a flat tire. Even with a spare, no one likes a flat tire. The woman at Acura 24-hour service was like, do you have a spare? And I'm like, <laughs> you she work for Acura. Car. Don't you know <laughs> that they don't put spares? <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear you. It's oh, all right. You're, oh, you're, you're, you will in edit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so she asked you if you had a spare tire, and your response again was? You work for Acura, and you don't know that they don't put spare tires in there? That's ridiculous. And her response was, well, since you don't have a spare, we're going to have to have you towed. Did they cover the tow at least? Uh, yes, that's covered okay. under the new vehicle. All right. Nice. Yeah, and uh, I'll... Was lucky enough to purchase the the wheel and tire protection package when I bought it, so the tire is covered. Good, will be replaced, which was a four hundred dollar tire. Yeah, well, they're not cheap. Let me just say, for you know, because y'all are obviously both new to Columbus area, the tire and wheel protection they sell with the new cars, normally from South Louisiana. I'm like, forget that junk. We don't need that up here with winter and all the potholes yeah. that. All that uh, snow plowing provides and how they destroy the roads, always get that. That is money well spent. It's a yeah. sucker's bet when you're down in South Louisiana, sure. but up here, you will, you will use every yeah. penny of that. I was so hesitant whenever I got it, and uh, he actually pointed that out, like, you know, you're going to need it up here, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. Especially with those little racing slicks. Probably you've paid got. for itself already. Um. Did, was there any damage to the car? That was my concern when I saw it on Facebook. I was like, I hope the car didn't get damaged with the blowout. Nope. Good. No damage. Good. Glad to hear that. Pride Glad ego. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Just a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Just uh, a wee bit. Well, and just to finish the introduction since we're there, I'm chilly. Hello. All right. Oh, let me introduce uh, my other co-host, Chili. Oh. Well, thanks, Patrick. Thanks for that kind introduction. I appreciate that. Oh, it's what I do. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. It's I been a good ask, day. Okay. Productive. The last couple of days have seemed to go really slow, but they've been very, very productive at the yard. Um, we've got a lot of stuff accomplished, lots of stuff moved to ready for teams or getting teams in those trucks. So uh, things have been going great. Thank you for asking. What are you going to do when you run out of uh, trucks and all the everything's done and we're actually there almost right now. We're, we're getting low on trucks to take care of. Uh, 803, our storage unit, um, is being uh, organized and cleaned up and cleared, not cleared out, but we're getting that organized and cleaned up. Uh, and then once we get that taken care of, we got some yard work to do in the yard, yard work to do in the yard. Uh, just some, some maintenance to clean things up in the yard to make things easier to get to. Um, and then I'm sure by that point, before we even get to that, I'm sure we'll have more trucks that need to get worked through it. Unfortunately, a truck coming back Saturday that needs to get worked on. So it, it's just a nonstop, never ending battle of getting trucks, um, ready for new teams. Yeah. And that one on Saturday really stinks. The team's been with us for a long forever. time. They're having yeah. some family issues. They did say once they get things kind of figured out, they're going to let us know. Sure. And, and, um, I wish them the best. That's rough. Uh, you know, you, we 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 you you know this we bat above the uh, curve. We do a really good job of keeping our teams. Sure. Um, but when things like health or or uh, life issues happen, it's just it, you know it, it's it's the nature of our business. You know, you're not at home where you can adjust your schedule. Correct. Maybe you go in an hour later to work, or you change that work schedule. You can't do that when you're on the road. You have to be on the road away from home to be successful and when these things happen you, you have to come off the truck and go home so it, it's a frustrating part of our business that we can't make those adjustments it's just the way it is unfortunately yeah no i agree i uh completely agree and i, and I hate it for this particular team but I, you know i think 
optimistically, they'll be back. Yeah, uh, sure. We have another team that um, we brought a truck back probably two or three weeks ago, and they've just recently reached out to us saying that they were able to find a solution a lot oh, faster wow. than they thought. That's awesome. And um, that they were, uh, they might even be, we're, we're checking into it. They might even be close enough where they don't have to reapply. They don't do any of that stuff. They're just gonna be able to go right back to work. So. We uh, it's nice when those kind of things happen. It really is. Now we've already given their truck away, so that's unfortunate. They're gonna have to remove back into another one. You know, sometimes when a team leaves, they come back two or three months later because it does happen. Um, especially with life issues, um, it's 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 cool because or, or it's not cool, but, but it's like okay, we're well, gonna get another truck because you're gonna be right. out so long. When yeah. a team's gone for a couple weeks, yeah, and then it's like oh, if yeah. I had known, so if fast. I would have known. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times we turn them fast because they're brought back really good. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I want to get you back into your truck because you did take care of, such good care of it. And uh, yeah, anyways, it is what it is. You're so you're doing maintenance and uh, and 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 catching up on your spring cleaning. Oh, hey, how convenient! It's spring. It is spring, so we're getting spring cleaning done uh, around the yard. I need to actually send you an email with some stuff we need to order for trucks, but uh, we're we're just trying to take account of what we've got and. How can we organize that space better to make it more efficient for us when we need to get things? Uh, we, we've changed the way we do things at the yard, you know, with our initial inspections. Yes. For those of you that don't know, uh, we have a, we, 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 when we bring trucks in, we used to park them in the yard and go over to them and do an initial inspection. We walk through everything. We have our checklist. It's kind of like when your car, used car salesman goes through and does their, their, 25,000 point inspection. Yes. We've got about 35,000 points we hit on each truck. Uh, now we take it straight over to where we store everything. We open it up and we do our initial inspection. If we need to put things in, in, in the truck, if we need our FedEx trucks, they need their, um, the green FMCSA rule book. They need their hazmat book. They need the orange um, emergency response guide. If the truck doesn't have that, we put them in right now. We have to swap the fuel card. We swap the fuel card right now. Um, if the remotes need batteries. The batteries go in right now. Before we did all that stuff in another area, we had to go back to 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 where we to our warehouse and bring stuff over to it. If the box needs straps or um, or load bars, we do all that stuff up front, so we, we get that taken care of. So uh, we're, we we want to organize that space so it's easier to get two things and access them and get them in the truck when they need to be in the truck. So absolutely, it's definitely more efficient. I, I went and helped y'all with that you uh, not too long we ago. Appreciate that. And it was it was really cool to see the efficiency, uh, just working the system and progressing and going. Hey, we can do this better with the same stuff. Right. It's it's yeah. there's not even like hey, let's buy a bunch of stuff, let's get a computer system to figure a program out. No, it's let's take the same thing we already have and make it better. Well, we're looking at how we can make make ourselves our, ourselves more efficient. You know, instead of having to go back and forth from the warehouse to the truck, if the truck's at the warehouse, I had a, a guy I worked with years ago. Um, he had a saying that a lot of folks don't understand. It was take wheels to what ain't got. That's yeah. a direct quote. Makes and sense. it means that you take the something that has wheels to something that doesn't have wheels and do your business and load load up what has wheels possibly and take it somewhere else to where you need it, as opposed to carrying things back and forth. So we we've we've in effect taken we're taking wheels to what ain't got. Um, a, a, another thing that we've noticed as well, garbage. We take garbage out right then and there. We have garbage set up in the warehouse. Uh, we take it out right then and there, and it goes in the trash. So we're not getting hauling trash back and forth. Um, we're replacing in cab air filters there. You know, in cab air filter, truck comes back and it had pets in it. We know that in cab air filter probably needs to be changed pretty soon, if not past due. Yeah. We swap that in cab air filter right there. So we do everything we can right then and there. Uh, and then the other things that need repair, possibly, we can get to them when we have a little more time. Uh, it takes because it takes more time to do that stuff a lot of times. You know, a, a, a hinge that's come off its its hook or something, or doorknobs that don't want to stay closed. We can do those things later when we have a little more time. Well, you know, what's funny is it's it's really the complete opposite of how things were when I was running it. All those little things, the IFTA books, the hazmat books, uh, IFTA books, the IFTA stickers, hazmat books, sure. all those uh, field cards, everything like that was the very last thing we did. Um, because my thought was always get the big stuff out of the way. The little stuff can be done really quickly. Sure. What I like what you're doing is y'all are all teaming up on a truck. It's getting done really, really fast. And then once the big stuff is done, the truck is done. Right. There's no more worry, no more, no more worrying about it. Or if something pops up on you, it's not the end of the world because right. you've already it's done already there. Yeah. everything else. So I, I do, I really like the way y'all 
went with it. Well, it was thank a, you. It was a different flow of logic from what I had, but it's a better flow. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that. We also it's also different. You know, we have I'm, we're there full time. There there are three of us that are there full time yeah. doing this job, as opposed to one person full time and another person when they had a chance. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. It's just we, we, you were so busy with what you were doing, yeah. you couldn't spend that time there. So now we have three of us there full time. We're able to focus on those things. And that's that's our primary focus. Are we doing other things? Sure. We've talked about that in other podcasts, how we all jump in and help. Absolutely. But my responsibility is that truck going out in an appropriate manner, yep. ready for a team. That's my job. If we fail at that, that falls squarely on my shoulders. Yes, there are other folks involved in it, but it's my responsibility to make sure that truck goes out the way it does. Uh, so we, we, I, that's my again, my full time job is to make sure it goes out properly. Absolutely. So I have to make sure that those systems are in place to do that. And those systems weren't all my idea. Please don't don't take this as this is me. I'm I'm doing this. Is I got this. No, uh, it's Melissa uh, Cheshire, Melissa Lee, uh, Donnie Lee helps us with that. Uh, so it's the four of us um, making those those changes, and making those things happen. Sure. Yeah, well, and it's that constant quest to to um, um, get better, right? To Always. see where are we, where Always. are we not doing right, and how can we get better? I think that's one thing that a vein that runs through our entire company is how do we constantly work to get better? Sure. How, like right now, um, Jerry, for example, he came over as our editor. He already knows how to edit. He already knows how to do everything we wanted him to. He has that core foundation, and what's he doing? He's enrolled in classes right now right. to learn how yeah. to get better. Yep. You know, it's that core, that 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 fundamental belief that kind of runs through our, our our veins of yes, we're doing a pretty good job, but we need to get better. Always. You know, our like perfection's unattainable. I firmly believe that True. we will never get there, but we can try hard to get but, as close to that mark as we can. As soon as you be- become complacent, you're yeah. going to fail, mm-hmm. guaranteed. Now, striving for perfection, sure, we're going to fail here and there. We're going to miss something. Yes. But as soon as we could become complacent, we're going to fail every time. Yeah. And we, we can't become complacent. Even though we think we have a good system in place right now, there's probably lots of ways to improve that system. Absolutely. So we're looking at different ways to become more efficient in the yard all the time. Yeah. When it comes to this podcast, like you said, Jerry's taking classes. I'm listening to Jerry talk about what he's doing here, and I want to get better at what I was doing when I was editing. I know. I haven't done a video in way too long. I I feel you staring at me over there. Buttermilk's over in the corner. She's staring at me right now because she keeps saying we need to do a Luke Shire video that um, promotes the Outer Belt podcast. And I agree. It hasn't happened yet, but I, I do want to get better at these things. Cause I like this stuff. So yeah, I do too. I think it's that fundamental quest of 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 knowledge of. Um, constantly wanting to improve that to me is the fun part of the job right so it is it really it's is on on my side right so between eric and i we run like the business portion of the company right that's kind of our our jobs and that is a constant quest for more knowledge on yeah. how can we run the business better how can we do things better more efficient how can it look better i completely agree with you there i mean you know, it's funny, and it puts you out of your comfort zone. A year ago, if you'd have said, hey, Patrick, why don't we start a podcast and we can do this, <laughs> whatever, I'd have been like, uh, no. Yeah. I don't want to be on camera. Right. I don't think I have a lot for people to hear me say. And it wasn't until you and I had enough good conversations where it's like, all right, maybe there's something there. Maybe we do need to give this a, a shot. And uh, I don't know how it's working. Uh, at least a couple hundred people a week tune in to hear us yeah. out. So I feel pretty good about that. So obviously we have something to say. We have something to say. Just do we have an audience to listen to it? Yes. Well, you know what we skipped over just now? What did we skip over? How's your week been? Uh, my week has been good. It's been very productive. Although oh, we did talk about like that. We did. I, I, covered, <laughs> I covered that when, when oh, I did my cold open and you didn't, you didn't bother asking me how I was doing. You didn't, you I didn't, didn't share it. You didn't talk about me though. I didn't. Okay. I actually cut you off and didn't let you talk about yourself and went over to Jerry Bear and talked to him for a little bit. Okay, it's your turn, Patrick. Hey, J- hey, Patrick, I'm curious. I'm super curious, Patrick. Oh, so curious. Said no one ever. How's your week been? Well, I had a wonderful uh, week. I, I, it, the weather. Can we talk hmm. about? Listen, listen. I'm listening. For the, let me just tell you one thing about the weather, real quick. <laughs> 
all week long. If I was going to have a pothole take out one of my tires, yeah. I would want it to be this, this week. week. That's true. The weather has been amazing. I mean, like, amazing. 60-degree mornings, 105-degree afternoons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. So we were, I was sitting outside yesterday, or the day before yesterday, my back porch, sitting out there having a Coke Zero. As you do. We'll go with that. And... um just enjoying the sun going down. So my backyard, uh, the porch faces east, no west, and so I actually do get to watch the sun go down every night it, when I when it when the weather's suitable. Sure. And I was just sitting out there going like, it is so hot. And the thought of like that's the first time this year I've had that thought. Yeah, it is the first time this year it's been that warm and to be able to sit there and watch the sun go down. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. I mean, like uh, I did forget. I don't know if y'all forgot. I forgot mosquitoes. Um, <laughs> they're back. Uh, but sitting out there, just watching the sun go down, feeling the, you know, because the cool thing about, especially up here, this high of elevation, or this high of, in, in, in North America, when the sun goes down, it gets cool quickly. Yes, it does. It does drop temperature pretty quick. So you can only sit out there so long after the sun goes down without a fire or blanket or something. And I was in, like, shorts and a T-shirt. So it wasn't going to be very long. But to watch the sun go down... Enjoy that afternoon heat and just be able to relax and kind of like zone out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was really, really appreciated. And I know, you know, a lot of our teams, a lot of our truckers, like they get down south, they get down to Southern California, they get down to Texas and all that st- uh, stuff, or Florida. And so they've been experiencing that for months now. Right. And it's just yeah. now getting to the point where we're experiencing that. Even when we went to Matt's a couple, three weeks ago, it was freezing outside it was freezing outside during the night during the day it warmed up nicely on just like saturday it warmed up well decent. but, but like it was, to the 50s it was cold that or 60s night. it, it wasn't mid 60s mid 60s it wasn't like hot it wasn't no, like it wasn't hot it was 84 85 yeah. something like that the other day like that's that was the first time we've had like okay this is this is warm well i hate i hate to to ruin your excitement but it's going to get stormy and cold again on sunday for a few days i know i saw that i mean we're not going back into winter weather yeah. It's just going to be, you know, the fourth faux spring that we get. Yes. It's going to drop into the 50s, 30s as a low. Yeah. It'll, it'll come back up again, but we're going to have a few days of, of I'm probably going to put a coat back on in the yard. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about that. I am, uh, we actually got in the backyard um, and picked up a bunch of like uh, sticks and things yeah. that, because we had some terrible storms come terrible. through here a few weeks ago and yeah. had we a whole lo- bunch of stuff that was down that we had to, pick up and we lost two trees in our backyard buttermilk and i from the winds mm. uh and so they the the landlord came out friday and took those down uh away because they came down completely they're already, they're already down. <laughs> yeah uh with his cleanup he did a great job cleaning up around what he took out he had three we had three bags of of yard waste and then uh, buttermilk got out there on sunday and did her thing she loves doing that stuff yes. it's like therapy for her and uh oh for yard waste day i took out uh, 25 additional bags plus his three of different, you know, trimmings of different bushes yeah. he trimmed and, and yard waste and things. So it's, it's, it's been good weather for doing those things. We're looking forward to enjoying our, the outdoor space that we built, um, the next couple months. Well, I do think people need to understand as well. My backyard is just a big lawn of grass with it trees is. around it. Lots um, of trees. Lots, uh, on the perimeter, the center has got no trees, but the edges all have trees. Your yard has a couple trees. Also on the kind of the, on the sides, uh, but your grass is like PGA standards. Our our grass <laughs> though, our trees are a lot closer. So and we have that huge huge oak tree. I don't know what kind of tree it is, but the dang thing is huge, and it the canopy on that covers our our house and the entire yard. If you look at our house on Google Maps, we've had a good sized yard. You can't see the yard. On satellite view, because that tree is so big. But you have a strip, like when you walk out immediately in front of you and to the left, is that not open? Immediately in front of us to the left is is open. Um, It may be a 20-foot strip. Yeah, it's not much. It's not very much, and the rest of it is is covered. Yeah, Yeah, That that tree, especially with leaves in the summer, it casts a pretty big canopy. You know what I was thinking would be really cool in that area that does get the sunlight? What's that? If y'all got like some pavers, yeah, and kind of dug out a square patch, hmm, I'm listening of grass. I'm listening, 
and just put down like pavers or, or even the square tile would look yeah. cool. Because I think pavers, I think a brick. Right. Uh, I'm I thinking I'm thinking more like tile. Interlocking brick yes. kind of things, yeah. Um, and then like put a nice little outdoor furniture set up or whatever out there. Now, That's... the one thing I would do is make sure it's the kind that the cushions come on and off easily because we right. get too many of these crazy storms. You'll be going into your neighbor's yard getting the cushions out. Um, That's a great idea. But I, I just think it'd be really cool in your backyard. I'll talk to her about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, I'm so uh, obviously a lot of people on podcast don't know my house. Uh, I'm on a grade, so like I don't have a flat spot in my yard right. at all. So I can't do that. That's why I thought it'd be really cool at your place. It would be great at our place. We should we should look into that. Yeah, we should definitely look into that. I think so as yeah. well. Um, but we have to talk about what's going on. There is a lot going on this week. There is a lot. Yeah, From but, loves a TA to pilot. Yes. Oh, my. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about it. Well, uh, the What's first... Up? What truck's up, up up to bat? Which one are we going to go for first? <laughs> the first one we're going to go to is Love's, just because it's the first article that I opened up. Yes. Um, and this one it probably excites me. Uh, this one... Uh, there, I actually kind of like them all, so... Uh, yeah. I mean, this one This one is, is interesting. Um, yeah, we found out the other day that uh, Love's uh, completed the acquisition of Easy Go. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, Easy Go was uh, owned by... Oklahoma-based Kerry Johnson Oil Company. Uh, it included six travel stops on the Oklahoma Turnpike, uh, five travel stops on the Kansas Turnpike, and 11 convenience stores in Oklahoma and Nebraska. Uh, this is going to be the first Love's branded travel stop on a turnpike anywhere ever. Uh, so this is big news. It's also big news for those of us that drove the 44 regularly or drive the 44 regularly, the Oklahoma Turnpike, to be able to have a Love's there, a... Uh, a, a a big name truck stop, one of the big three, on the turnpike itself, and not have to make your way all the way through to get to the Oklahoma. On, on the, going north to south, you'd have to get all the way into Tulsa yes. before you found a Loves. Um, and oh, then I don't even know if there's a Loves there. There's a Flying J there. I'm not even sure there's a Loves. I think there was, is a Loves there now in Tulsa. Okay, which is strange that Loves is based in Oklahoma City. And you can find all kinds of loves all around Oklahoma City, but there is a loves there in Tulsa, I'm pretty sure. Well, you know, I just recently drove back from Vegas, and I took the 40 to the 44 to come up here towards Columbus. And I was amazed just making that drive and seeing all the Panther trucks, all the FedEx trucks up and down that road. It is such a highly trafficked area. And knowing that loves being our primary fuel supplier – how on that tollway, it's just difficult. It's not easy to get off. There are a couple of loves that I can think of that are on the tollway, but you got to pay to get off. And right. they, they're really not yeah. the best loves are around. And it is um, really more for like um, local traffic. It's not for your main, um, you know, tollway goers. Right. And yeah. um, so this is huge. I think it, be a great chance people will be able to finally use their points to pay for things because we'll stop, still stop at those toll plazas. We won't get fuel there, but we, we normally would stop there, do a 30 minute break, grab something to eat, there, use the restroom, get a bag of MMs, yep, a big exactly. gulp, or what have you. Exactly. And this will allow them to now get their points if they're buying something or redeem points if they're going <clears> to <throat> acquire something there that's uh, points based. And then also uh, be able to get fuel in the tollway. You know, one thing I like that Chicago does um, is on the I-94, I believe it is. That is it I-94 that brings you by um, from downtown Chicago out past, out to Rockford past um, o- uh, O'Hare. Is that 94? Yeah, going kind of um, northwest yes. there out of Chicago. Yeah, I think it is. Well, halfway down that, it's a tollway, and halfway down that tollway is an exit and it has several truck stops. It is maybe the only free, it's it's one of, if not the only free exit, because they understand truckers have to have services, and, right. and so they let them get off, whereas Kansas and Oklahoma didn't do that. They are, you're on the tollway, you're paying to get it on, you're paying to get off, we don't really care. Right. So having Loves get this, I think, is huge, because it provides a service that other states have used elsewhere, Um and made it favorable for truckers, but now these two uh, cities are catching up. 
Sure. Or, or, or it, and then the cities aren't even catching up. It's actually just loves buying out the the company so that they can. And they're buying that contract because usually yes. the, a, a a company has a contract with the Turnpike Authority uh, yes. for that that location to put their their truck stop there. So that's what you're seeing there is is loves buying out that contract of buying out Easy Go. And along with Easy Go, they get that contract to uh, to put their facilities, uh, their name brand on that place. So yep. uh, it's it's exciting news. I mean, we're seeing a lot of news here in the truck stop world. We've talked the last few weeks about TA being purchased by BP, yes. which we have more news on that. Um, the the yes. Department of Justice has or the, is it the FTC or the Department of Justice has said that FTC. they're not going to challenge. Um, that that buyout of TA by BP. Yes. Um, so so that, there's no objection. So that's so that's going to go through. Correct. Yeah, that is the FTC Federal yeah. Trade Commission. So um, they're they're the ones that are responsible for monopolies and, and anti-monopoly and antitrust laws and all that stuff. And they looked at it and said it's a fair deal, and so they're letting it. Now, one thing I heard, I'm pretty sure it's true, but I'm not positive, was that BP used to own TA back in the day. And they sold it out to an equity company who made it public, yada, yada, yada. And so they're really kind of just re-buying, acquiring. reacquiring a company yeah. they used to own, yeah. um, which is interesting. I did not know that. No, we, we got an interesting lesson on the history of fuel stations um, when we were at Matt's. And I haven't done any research on it, so I, I hate to I, I hate to expand on that without actually yeah. having the knowledge, but... Um, that was that was interesting history. Maybe maybe I'll do that research one day and and, and learn more about that. Yeah, it was really interesting. Um, I remember that conversation uh, that we had, and it was um, kind of eye opening. And it was interesting too because we talked about TA, and we talked about how they bought the seventy six truck stops. And right. um, it's it's kind of interesting. You can really tell. Like that's something I knew about from uh, just years of on the road. Is those old seventy six truck stops? You can always tell which ones those are because most of them are the two-story TAs. So if you know the TAs that have the showers are on the second floor, right? Yeah. most of those were the 76 truck stops, and uh, TA bought them out and obviously made them their own brand. Sure. But um, sure. it's interesting, too, because you have these one-story TAs all across America, and then you have this whole nother, it's almost like a franchisee, a whole nother sect of them where they're all two stories and – you usually got to walk up a staircase kind of right off the entrance and mm-hmm. it's usually glass enclosed or what have you. And, um, yeah, those, those always, I, they always made me feel weird. I, I always I, felt weird in those two story truck stops too. Yeah. I, I really did. I, I'm like, I just, I'm showering over a convenience store. You know, if you have limited mobility, they're kind of a pain to use. Um, they weren't very wide staircases. They were pretty narrow. They, they were. Usually you had you had a rail on one side and you had the, a, a wall on the other like the, of the building. Yes. It, it just wasn't very inviting to go up there. It wasn't. I remember going up there maybe for the first time and being like, I'm not positive I should even be here. <laughs> but, but what's even more difficult is if you were like bringing your laundry up there because a lot sure. of times the wash chair yeah. was up there too, laundromat. And so now you're carrying your big bag of laundry and you're walking past someone else walking down. The st- it was just, it, it was weird. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, I doubt BP gets rid of those, but if they do, I won't. I won't be the most saddest person or, in the world. Or, or, or a remodel maybe to make to make you it clear that that's where you're supposed to go for showers and laundry, and you're not going into yeah. private business area necessarily. Well, you know, there was one of those just south of Cincinnati in northern Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they just tore that one to the ground. When you say just, you mean like a year and a half ago? Like a year and a half ago, they tore yeah. it to the ground, and I thought. Okay, so they've sold it because there's two like two exits down from each other. Sure, they're really close. Are, yeah. So I figured, okay, well they're they're gonna tear this down and sell the property because that that area is booming sure. and all the stuff. Nope. nope. I went by there recently on a way to Matt's, and there there's a whole new TA building up. I mean, they completely just tore it down and they're rebuilding it entirely. That's, so that's the one. Um, just though, so they have the one in Florence and the yes. one just south of Florence. They never took the TA sign down from that location. I noticed that. Yes. The, the TA, big, the big TA road sign stayed up the whole time. So it was a long process of, of tear down or construction. Well, they did, um, a, they did a lot of yard, not yard, a lot of um, what sort of like grading. Like sure. I saw they brought in a bunch of dirt. Right. They regraded the whole property yeah. and everything. So I did notice they, they 
it wasn't just tear it down, rebuild it. It was a lot of. Work. That'll be welcome when they actually reopen that to get that get more parking spaces in there. That, that that's it, it. It made the one right in Florence a lot more congested. Obviously, you lose a truck stop with who knows how many parking spaces, yeah. and everyone goes flocks to the one spot. It, it makes it a lot worse. But that, that'll be a welcome uh, when they reopen that one. Absolutely. There. Do you think they're yeah. gonna re- bring back the uh, Taco Bell? I hope they do. And, I've, and the Mexican pizza. Yeah, that ta- that Taco Bell at that particular that, that was always my like as I was driving back when we used to live in Louisiana or when we take a truck out to Texas yeah. and bring it back. That was always my like if I could push <laughs> through without stopping. That was my little treat. Was your reward was yeah. it a, ta- a Mexican pizza from Taco Bell? I, actually, that uh, they they that location couldn't do Mexican pizzas, and they couldn't do few other things because it was, a, it was a Taco Bell Express oh, the that Express. didn't have a fryer or right. something. They they didn't have so they could only they do probably l- didn't have the press that they used for like the, the grilled stuff burritos. Like it's May, been too long. I, there was some uh, yeah there was some things they could do some things they couldn't okay. do. It was very strange. Um, like if you had their nachos, the the chips were different because they weren't fried in house. They were just big bags like basically tostitos sure. you would get, yeah. but. So their chips versus a regular Taco Bell's chips are different. So interesting. It was it was very interesting. interesting. But I'm glad they're rebuilding it. I look forward. I'm sure. I mean, like that's a even for me. That's a common area I travel. So it's, I'm sure I'll be uh, checking it out before long. Yeah. I know the last few TAs are Petros that they've opened have been very nice. So I'm hoping this one uh, maintains that level of quality. Let's hope they do. I mean, being a brand new store, let's hope that they've uh, they've up their game a little bit. Speaking of upping their game. Uh, we the one truck stop that we haven't talked about a whole lot is uh, Pilot Flying J. Is that the best coffee on the interstate, Pilot it, it Flying is, J? It is the best coffee on the. They interstate, have the tankers. Pilot Flying J. The tankers uh, full of coffee going down the interstate, right? You know, uh, you know how many times I've driven by one of those tankers and have wished I could do an in-flight refueling from that tanker. You know what I mean? Just stick my cup, yes. my big mug, out the window, yes, and hit a tap on the side of the truck and refill my coffee yeah. and hit it and. Let him keep on going because he's going faster than I am anyway. Well, that's why some coffee. of those that's why some of those trailers say "caution hot." Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> they're pouring really, really hot, hot coffee. coffee, really hot coffee. Uh, so the um, owners of Pilot Flying J and or the Pilot Companies, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, has decided to change the management team over the Pilot Companies, and the Pilot Companies encompasses. Pilot and Flying J. Yes. Uh, so they're they're changing the uh, executive management team there. Uh, so there'll be a new CEO and a new CFO uh, starting on June first. I did see that. Yeah. So that's interesting as well. That they're looks like they're they're pivoting in some way too. They didn't talk about a lot of details on what their plans are for the future, other than changing the executive team. So it's going to be interesting to see what that new team does for Pilot Flying J. Yeah, I'm curious what uh why and and what their plans are sure because really as far as truck stop companies have gone you know loves and pilot flying j have kind of been running the show for a while ta and petro have been struggling i mean they're a great truck stop company uh there's a lot of people that argue ta and petro get a better quality fuel than everybody else okay. does um and and i do know uh, back in the day at least ta and petro tried to source non um bio fuel okay I think at All this right. point now they don't have a choice anymore, <clears throat> but for a long time they were trying not to. And um, so there are a lot of people that would say, hey, better quality fuel. And for a while, even back, you think back 10 years ago when we got a trucking, their showers were the cleanest and right. nicest and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's been weird seeing like the, the, the downgrade of them and really see TA and Pilot and Flying J, I'm sorry, loves Pilot and Flying J kind of take over as being the more premium truck stops. Now that Pilot and Flying J are making this huge switch. I mean, when you change a CEO and a CFO, everything's out the window. Oh, sure. You there, can there's do anything. More that is, unless these people are are being trained, kind of like when you uh, look at like Tim Cook taking over for Steve Jobs, right. or there's other companies like this, and, and I, my mind's going blank. But unless they've been training for years to take over that job, and then they go and they take over that job, sure. if they're bringing from outside, and in this particular case, Brett Star Hathaway, they are bringing... Outside of T, outside of Pilot and Flying J, management in to run the company. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, you're not bringing in new management like that for just to maintain the status quo. Correct. To to change nothing. Yes. If you're bringing in new management to, to, to for, you're you're bringing them in to make a change 
yes. uh, to the company and not to just keep things the way they are. Otherwise, why make a change? Yes, and you're doing that on a company that's already profitable. Sure. So then yeah. my question is why? Do you want to be more profitable? Do you see what Loves is doing and you, you're chasing that? Or are you looking at it from a quality perspective of we're getting complaints that some of these older locations aren't being maintained and we want it like the whole PJ Fresh thing I think was kind of a failure. I think it was. Um, for those of y'all don't know, PJ Fresh was their attempt at offering like healthier food alternatives. They um, installed a bunch of flying J's and pilots across the country. A like... Um, not a salad bar, but like a, a, an area where they served uh, or sold like healthier options, vegetable trays or vegetable cups, fruit cups, things like that. And, and hard-boiled and, and eggs. Hard-boiled eggs, yeah. uh, cheeses, sandwiches, all that good stuff. And then they also had a hot bar where you could get meatloaf or chicken wings or whatever. I mean, that food's fine. Yeah. Like, I, I have gotten a, a slice of pilot pizza in my day, um, but it is far from being a fresh, healthy alternative. Certainly. Yeah. Fresh, and maybe. Maybe. You know, well, depends, bananas. I've depends, seen quite a few green bananas. That's pretty fresh. Depends on your definition of fresh when it comes to the hot food, right? Um, but they're also selling these in restaurants that are in, in, in stores that still had other restaurants as well. Correct. So, you know, again, the hot food that they're calling fresh, who knows if it came from frozen or if it was made from scratch there on site. I yeah. doubt it. But who knows? Maybe it was. Uh, but they're, they're, they're certainly looking for something different. Even though they're profitable, they don't want to become complacent. They're looking at, at yeah. the, 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 the playing field of what they're, the future, and they're going, okay, Pilot, I'm sorry, TA is being purchased by BP. That's a huge cash inflection into TA yes. with BP. Uh, Loves is picking up uh, Easy Go. Uh, there's another love story that we didn't touch on where they are investing. Is it like two or four billion or something like something that? Something like that, yeah. One billion. Um, one billion. Oh, yeah, they're they're investing a billion dollars into Kanye. into improving their stores, their current operations, and remodeling. So when you're looking at what what's happening with TA and Petro and and Loves, um, Pilot's got to do something. So they're looking at that field out there ahead of them, going, okay, we need to make changes now. We can't wait and see what they're doing. Yeah, we need to make changes now. Let's get some fresh leadership in here, some fresh ideas, and, and let's make things happen. Well, I thought it was interesting too. Jimmy uh, House, House, I don't know how to say his last name. I apologize. Governor of Tennessee used to be the CEO of an owner family of Pilot Flying J. Hmm, okay. Um, they own the Tennessee Titans. That's the one. He came in and said, "You know, I've talked to Berkshire Hathaway. I like what they're doing. This is a good move for Pilot Flying J, et cetera, et cetera." So it sounds like he's got, or, or, or they've got his approval on it. Yeah. Now. Do they really? Is he just trying to save face because this is his company? I don't know. But, I mean, it takes a lot to stick out and say, yeah, I co-signed this not knowing what the future holds. Haslam. Jimmy Haslam? Haslam. Hey, Jimmy Haslam. That's the one, yes. Prior uh, Tennessee governor and owner of the Tennessee Titans. That's the one. Previous owner of the family owner of the Pilot Flying J franchise. Yes. Or I believe the... they still own a portion of it, too. I don't okay. think they... Uh, I think Berkshire Hathaway is by far the majority, but I think they still own quite a bit of it as well. Yeah, the article I'm looking at does say that uh, Berkshire Hathaway is a majority owner. It doesn't break out the other owners, but sure. Yeah. But, I mean, that's such a huge company with so much money. I mean, if you were a 10% owner, you'd be a billionaire. You know, it's 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 that kind of company. Right. sure. It's going to be interesting to see where they go going forward. It really is. I agree. They've got, you know, a good situation. They've got a lot of money behind them. They've got pretty good stores. I mean, there are quite a few Pilot Flying J's around the country that are dumps. A lot of them are really nice. I mean, but, they really have taken the time to invest in their brand. I whether or not it's, whether or not it's all hit, that's a different story. But they have tried. They even you know they've they've uh, worked with um, Southern Tire. They've worked with Boss Shops. They've worked with a few of these other companies to try to put. The, they even have a Pilot uh, Repair Shop now, as well. It's, it's their own brand. So they have tried to move in that direction as well. And maybe that's what part of their plan is, is to uh, really take on that shop side of things as well within their company and not just be a, a truck or not just be a fuel provider. Sure. And that seems like it's the one piece that's missing. It does. You know, even though Loves isn't doing full on maintenance on, on and most of their shops are doing tires, oil changes, light maintenance, they call it light mechanical, they call yes. it. Uh, TA really has that truck stop full-service maintenance shop more so than anybody else, and 
you have a boss shops near just off property of a lot of pilot flying jays uh they might have a tire shop affiliated nearby yeah uh but what they're doing with their branded stuff growing that i think is going to be huge for them if they can get that up and running and and the relationships are in place. I agree, and I think that takes a lot of cash too. Sure, a lot of money. Oh. Loves started with literally like just outdoor sheds with one little compartment that was enclosed, and that's where they started as a tire shop. That's yeah. all they did was tires, repair yeah. flats, and put new tires on. That's it. And they were able to build that into a pretty good network, and then they bought Speedco, and they were able to integrate all that together. Right. Um, TA and Petro have had shops. As long as I can remember. I mean, growing up as a kid, we had a Petro not terribly far away from us, and it always had a shop there. I mean, it's that shop's at least 30-something years old. Sure. They've been at it for a long time. Pilot's new to this. And I think a lot of those boss shops and those um, Southern Tires and such, I think that's on leased land. I think that was the route they went. It was like, hey, let's lease a section of our truck stop out to these places and they can serve as that so so we don't have to worry about it. Right. We can collect a little lease payment, but all the investments on uh, on them and what they've discovered is, you know, when you have a one stop shop like TA that can give me my fuel, take care of my drivers, and also repair the trucks and loves is doing the same thing. Yeah. And I can lo- earn loyalty points by going to those shops. Absolutely. I've got the one stop shop there where I can get air- all my maintenance done. I've got a truck stop I can go in a shower have a comfortable driver's lounge versus sitting around in some ratty mechanical mechanic shop, just, you know, nothing yep. to do. So yeah, they, they, they're bringing the whole thing full circle. Yep. I, I, I would be, I would be shocked if that wasn't an area that they were going to put some more money into. Well, so we'll check back in a year and see where they're at. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, I think it'd be interesting. Now I do want to talk real quick, briefly about the, Airplane of the week. Oh yes, we have to cover the airplane. We of the have week, to cover definitely. the airplane of the week. It is our contractual obligation, obligation. Yes. to one of the owners of Highfield. Um, the airplane of the week is. I, a, I won't ask which one. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Oh, we all. I think we all know. We who it all is. know. Yeah. The airplane of the week is a Virgin Atlantic, um, which is a. That's a company. It's a carrier. It is. They're based out of London. Uh, Virgin Atlantic, Airbus A three thirty. Um, airplane. Uh, this is a Dash 300 model, so it's a little longer, carries a little more people than a Dash 200 model. Um, but this little airplane is uh, an airplane that I, I had an absolutely fantastic time on one time. Uh, we flew out, I, Air, uh, so Virgin Atlantic, back up, Virgin Atlantic co-chairs and partners with Delta Airlines. Okay. So, and, and you know, I'm a Delta Airline loyalist, so... We decided let's go out to London, do a four day weekend out in London. We've never done it. We've never done a trip that short. Let's see if we can pull this off. Spoiler alert, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't. It's impossible. Uh, too, too short. Too, way too short. So we booked uh, the flight on Virgin Atlantic through the Delta, through Delta, and uh, flew on this A330. Um, on the way, actually, the return leg. So from London Heathrow back to. Uh, New York City, on a daytime flight um, on this plane and had a blast. The airplane actually has a, I don't know if they call it a lounge or a bar or what you want to call it. Really? But there was a bar with stools in the middle of the plane and a bartender, or a flight attendant who served as a bartender, and they had like pretzels and nuts and everything you would typically find. So I got at a ask, pub. Did these bar stools have seat belts? They did not. Hmm, interesting. No. Yeah, it was kind of strange. Yeah, but they were fixed. The bar stools couldn't move. No, but you could fly off of them if you weren't seat belted to the bar stool. I think if there was any turbulence, they closed it and made you go away. Gotcha. Now, in this particular case, the weather was fine. But at one point, you know, there's like four bar stools. I'm sitting in one back there chatting just mm-hmm. just with other people. We're talking about flying. You know, when you fly transatlantic and you talk to a lot of people, you find out there's a lot of people that do it back and forth constantly for work, especially when you fly to New York City. New York City to London, I mean, half those airplanes are full every week with people just going back and forth doing business. Right. So we're chatting with people who that's what they do. They know the flight attendants. They've flown on them so many times. 
it's like, oh, hey, Barb, how you doing? You know, they just know each other. Right. And so we're hanging out, chatting with them. Had a blast. Eric ended up coming up, uh, coming back there and hanging out with us as well. And it made the six and a half hour trip feel like three hours, maybe two hours. I mean, it went by so quick. Just being able to sit there, chat. Virgin Atlantic, they're big on allowing their people to express themselves. Okay. So you have to wear the uniform, but there's several uniforms you can choose from. Um, and you're allowed to have your tattoos showed. You're allowed to have your uh, facial hair. Um, you're allowed to just various little things like that, that, that are symbols of exp- piercings, right. symbols of expression. They're totally fine with. And so you get a, a more, how do I put this? You get a very eclectic group of people who most airlines won't hire. And so because then they are working with a company like Virgin Atlantic, you get a fun experience. Yeah. If that makes sense. Sure. Um, Like I love Delta. All their flight attendants are super professional. They carry themselves in a way that makes you want to fly Delta again. You feel very safe. They are super uh, hospitable. Hospitable. Thank you. And and always take care of you. Um, And a lot of them are fun. But Virgin Atlantic just takes it to another level. Right. They, you know, you think about Richard Branson, you think about everything he does. Oh, sure. It is all about how do we make things have fun. You right. walk on the airplane, yeah. it's bathed in red. Like, what other airline would have you do that? They, it's bathed in red. They walk around. Your options are champagne or water or mimosas. Like, that's it. Yeah. Your choice. <laughs> um, and then it's, it's like bottomless. They just keep, keep bringing pouring. it around. They are that kind of company where it's like, how do we make you have the most amount of fun you're ever going to have crossing the Atlantic Ocean? That's 90% of their business. And uh, this was a great flight, had a blast, loved every minute of it. Oh, and the cool thing about it is your seat. So we're in business class. Or the, yeah, business class. And their seats are like angled away from the windows, okay. which is kind of weird because if you want to look out the window, you actually got to like crane your neck. It's... Hmm. Kind of a pain. You stare at a black wall. So, because you're looking at the aisle, because you're angled away from the window, so you're looking at the aisle. It's just you, one seat. You have a wall on each side of you. And then directly in front of you is another wall. So while this sounds crazy, and I remember seeing photos of this going like, that's going to be weird. I'm not sure I'm going to like that. It does sound crazy. You have so much privacy. Hmm. Because that. you can't see the person in front of you, you can't see the person behind you, you can't see the person next to you. It is like the utmost privacy you can have without literally being in a cabin with a door. Does that black wall become a video screen or something? It doesn't. It just stays black uh, leather. But you do have a, a, a video monitor that pops out of the wall, and you can look at it kind of like imagine a swing okay. arm on a sure. television. Yeah. And uh, but again, I didn't really use it much because I spent most of my time in the lounge, <laughs> in the lounge. hanging out with the other people. <laughs> hey, those, those flights, a lot of people are sleeping. Sure. So it's nice to be able to walk over to a lounge and be able yeah. to talk to people and not worry about waking anybody up. It was just so much fun. It really made me fall in love with the Virgin brand. They really know how to um, welcome you into the family and make you want to keep working with them. So um, since then, I've put my dad and my sister on a Virgin flight. Um I have encouraged people to fly them. And, uh, yeah, you know, I had a complaint on them. My my sister said the one problem she had with them is that they were too um, too hospitable. <laughs> at, at one point, she was like, throughout her, she was eating food on those long flights, they feed you. Right. And they kept walking by and being like, would you like more wine? Would you like more croutons? Would you like more bread? And she's like, it was just aggravating. I wanted to watch my movie and not have. <laughs> no. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I love that. Yeah. Yes, more. Yes, more. Please, more. Please, How, more. Yes. And she's like, no, I want more time to eat, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you were talking about the fun and and the atmosphere and all that. It makes me wonder how Virgin is on their cruising side with that ship they have. Yes. I hear and see a lot of stuff on the internet about that. And being I, adult only. I was going to say, I hear there are adult only, no kids on the Virgin Cruises. Yeah, it is 18 and up. Yeah, Interesting. 18 and up. So I have, I mean, so to some of y'all listening, you might be surprised, but for the, a lot of y'all, well, I, we, we cruise a lot. I like cruising. It's a great way to get away from a trucking company without um, having to go, how do I put this, without having to do an eight-hour flight or something. Sure. You can actually just get away, and you're at sea, you're being taken care of, and you can just kind of, 
I don't want to say turn your brain off, but you really can. You, you can. just got to turn your yeah. brain off and sit at the the pool and just kind of look out. A lot of people, that's a turn off. A lot of people want that. A lot of people don't. They want to do more, 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 more. Jerry will tell you right now, I'm a, I'm a one of those more and more people. We've yeah. gone to Italy. We've gone to Portugal. Let's do, let's go, let's whatever. But there are times where it is nice to sit back and do nothing. And so that's where I think cruising comes in very handy. It's 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 fun with that. Um, but they are adult only. I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard all kinds of things. I've heard everything from it is a little too adult friendly. And hmm. I've heard that it is uh it's very relaxing because there are no kids. You can, you know, if you grab a glass of champagne and you walk around the decks or whatever, it's fine. I've heard that um, the there's a lack of swimming pools. They just have real small plunge pools. They don't have real quote unquote swimming pools, so that's a turnoff for a lot of people. Um, the bedrooms, they brought in a design team to design the bedrooms, and they had them do it. Um, they literally intentionally brought in people who have never designed cruise ships before. Okay. Just so they can get the most creative, artistic, awesome looking rooms. But a downside of that is a lot of practical stuff of like, what do you do with your bag once you've unloaded it? Do you have closet space? Right. They didn't necessarily put those things in there. So I've heard some criticism that some of the rooms can get a little cluttered because sure. you don't have places to store your belongings. <clears throat> and, and when you're on a cruise ship, if you've ever done one, you get your cruise, you get in your room. If you're on like a week long cruise or longer, you're taking everything out of your bags, right? Hanging you're, them all up in your you're closet. Moving in. You're you're moving in for a week, yeah. and you put your luggage under your, most cruise ships under your bed have space intentionally designed for luggage, and so it is really nice uh, and convenient way to um to 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 vacation because you are moved in. You are you're like getting ready to leave. I. Or, or to go out uh, for the night to have dinner, come back to the room, grab my jeans out of the out of the drawer. Right. Um, my shirt's been hanging up, so it's nice sure. and and fresh. Like it's it's easy. It's it, it takes you know an hour to move into your cabin. It takes another hour to move out of your cabin. But for the rest of the week, it's super easy. You're set. You're set yeah. up already. Yeah. So interesting. But it is funny you mentioned that. Did you know that Highfield is actually going on a cruise? I did know that. Oh, okay. Well, tell us about it. Uh, it's going to be Highfield at Sea. Yes. Uh, and I don't know the exact dates, but I do know that it's over New Year's. It is over New Year's. It is December 30th through January 7th, 7th. <laughs> 2020. So 20, December 30th, 2023 through January 7th, 2024. Go on. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of... Uh, let's let's What cruise line? I... Uh, Royal Caribbean on the world's largest ship. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I hear it's Wonder w- of the Seas. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was there gonna say go. it's wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, Wonder of the Seas. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, yes, it's, it's such a cool ship. I'm looking forward to going. You know, one thing we never talked about because um, we've, if you heard the podcast, we've talked about it a couple times. You know, one of the restaurants they have on this boat that we have not talked about is called the Mad Hatter. Ooh. That is a Cheshire Cat. No, a uh Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland themed restaurant. No, it's 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 a really it's uh hmm interesting restaurant. So they serve things like foam. Thumb. Foam. Common spelling. F as in Frank. O as in Orlando. A as in apples. M as in mariachi. Foam. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. What's this foam taste like? Bacon. Bacon. Mm, sounds good. It's crazy stuff. And they, it's like a 19-course meal or something. They, it, it is a paid-for. You have to do additional. Okay. Uh, it's really cool because the, the, the back wall is all glass and it overlooks uh, the boardwalk area. And you see people like uh, zip lining over your head and everything. And they have all kinds of crazy food, crazy cocktails, crazy uh, mocktails, all kinds. It's just really cool. You get your menu, it's completely white, and they show you the trick so you can actually see what the menu is because you can't see it until you do the magic trick. Do you have to heat it up underneath or something? With, or should I well, just figure it out? Don't well, tell me. Yeah, we, I don't want to ruin the yeah, surprise. I don't want to surprise. I remember for the big thing I remember for it was dessert. 
Okay. Dessert, we had giant mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like fondant, dant, fond, fondant, fondant, fondant yeah. covered mushrooms. chocolate cake or something. But they were, it was outstanding. Wow. It was really, really good. And it was, uh, they like brought it around the table so that like everybody got everything. Yeah. So that there's not like a, like there were a couple of choices you had to make, but for the majority you got everything, and it was uh, it was really interesting. People that, ask me, is it good or bad? I say, go and try with an open mind. Yeah. And keep in mind, it's interesting. That sounds like fun. It it it's you know it, it's one of those things too where you go with an open mind, go with a childlike imagination. Yeah. Have a lot of fun. Um, there will be children around. That's not an adult only area. But it is decent food. Okay. I think I had like beef short ribs or something as my entree. But it was, um, yeah, it was a neat place. I encourage people to try it. The Mason Jar was uh, shouted out from our audience earlier. That's a restaurant I love. Cool thing about it is it's got a restaurant with a bar. And the bar is open to anybody anytime. And they have a country band playing there at night. So you can go like hang out and do si and all that good stuff. And then if you want to eat at the restaurant, during lunch, it's... Uh, like a reduced price, and they okay. have a, they have a special lunch menu, and then yeah. they have a dinner menu, which is, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. I don't necessarily recommend the restaurant. I mean, it's a nice restaurant, but like go to the bar. Some of their drinks are crazy. Like they have the peanut butter and jelly old fashioned. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh. What, what if, what if, <laughs> that sounds exciting. It is really good. And the country band, when we went, the country band was really, really good. And that's one thing that Royal Caribbean does very well is they hire really good musicians. They don't skimp. They don't like, you know, there's that whole uh, joke online about cruise ship entertainers or whatever. Sure. Those are people that yeah. are Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. This <laughs> Carnival's is getting, I mean, not Carnival, uh, Roll Caribbean is getting some of the best uh, musicians, entertainers out there. And um, it does make for a good time. Like if you want to get away and you're like, hey, I'm in the mood, let me go hear some country music and do a little line dancing. They have it. I got to say, uh, on all of the Royal Caribbean cruises, that we've been on all of them all one of them okay uh we really enjoyed the, the entertainment we yep. really did yeah yeah and i'm looking forward to it for people like jerry who have been on royal caribbean's uh adult cruise line or not adult but like luxury cruise line i guess you'd say celebrity where it was a fairly boring cruise wasn't it it was it was an, an older crowd it, well, not even that. I mean, yeah, that was part of it. But not only that, but like they just didn't have a lot of activities that went into the night. Then hmm. there wasn't a whole lot to do. Um, it's going to be totally different on Royal Caribbean. Like I, I did go to their casino, but it was like I had to find time in my schedule to go because there's so much going on. So to me, the, much happening. To me, the, cru- the casino is like, I'm bored. I want to go do something. Yeah. It's so much going on that it was like, oh, this is actually legit hard to get to. <laughs> um but anyways, I'm looking forward to it. If you haven't already signed up, go ahead and sign up. You can um, book through Highfield at Sea, which you can find us on YouTube. We have a little, um, on this channel on YouTube, there's a little explanation of how to join uh, via us. If you want to book directly through your travel agent or online, you can do that as well at this point. Just um, we're doing early dining if you want to eat with us. But it is, uh, it's going to be a fun time. I'm looking forward to it. And then the only other thing I can think of, Vince, is... Expedite Expo. That is correct. July... To hide your notes. 21st through the 22nd of 2023. At the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum That's... in the lovely city of Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's right. Yeah. Um, we're going to be there. Highfield's going to be there. We're going to have a beautiful booth uh, set up. We've got... Uh, Expedite Boogie, Luke Shire, Luke Shire Expediting Adventure. Adventure. I was going to say yeah. Mel and Vince's Expediting Adventure, but that's not right. Luke oh. Shire. Yeah, that's a new channel. Oh, could be. Hmm. Thoughts? And uh, we're going to have Expedite Chicks there. We're going to have, oh, what's that podcast they just started? Outer Belt. We're going to have Elver Belt uh, yeah. podcast. will be there hanging out. The owners of Highfield, all the staff from Highfield. Bunch of the mentors you, we've talked about mentors for yeah, bunch, yeah, a little bunch bit. Of contractors Not, will be there too. Bunch of contractors will be there. Bunch of vendors. You want to go climb inside of some trucks, see what they mm-hmm. look like. They're all going to be there. It is a good time. If you are already part of the Highfield family, come hang out with us. We want to get to know you better. If you are not part of the Highfield family, but you're interested, come on out. We'd like to get to know you. Get have you um, meet us. Get to know us. Fill us out. See if you like us or not. 
And if you are not Highfield family and you don't want to get to know us, come out. Yeah, have some fun. There's out. other fleet owners to talk There's to. There's lots of other folks to get to There's, know. Uh, it's just a good time. It's a good yeah. show. You know, even we're going to pay for the party at the casino night and we're going to have a blast. Even if you don't want to come uh, work with us, it's still a fun time. We just encourage everybody to come out. Usually it's a pretty big crowd uh, and they give away a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, lots of fun stuff. Lots of fun stuff. They um, didn't you win last year or two years ago or no? Uh, I was two years two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Two years ago, they drew my name out of a hat, and I won five hundred bucks cash. Yeah. Do you know who won that last year? I did. Did you? I did. Stop it. <laughs> I really did. Wow. The, the past two year winners of that um, five hundred bucks is right here in this table. And all the way all the way back in twenty fourteen. Our 2013, rather, Eric Highfield won the 50 inch big screen TV giveaway. Nice. I know. Nice. It means this table's uh, uh, almost a table full of winners. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, come out and see us. Come out and hang out with us. That wraps up the show for the night. Thank you, everybody, for listening. If you liked what you saw or heard, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We see how many people are watching these videos and we know that most of you are not subscribed and that yeah. is a travesty 94 percent is not subscribed that is unbelievable it costs it really nothing is. it is free yeah Get but that little but it's expensive <laughs> it's free <laughs> free 99 you know what and, and if the content that we're providing that you don't enjoy um after you subscribe just unsubscribe and we'll give you money back all, all of it. Yeah, yeah. All of it. I, I, I can do it better. If you like us, but you don't like our content, let us know. Send us a comment. Yeah, tell us what drop you us want to hear. Drop us an email at theouterbeltpodcast at gmail.com. Theouterbeltpodcast at gmail.com. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us what you want to talk about. So if you've already done it, we've actually got some topics that we're going to be discussing that you've already emailed us. We didn't get to today, but we will be getting to them shortly. Um, Y'all have the literal keys to the show. You do. This really is do. this is your show. We will talk about anything ish. Mostly. Give, mostly. Mostly. Uh we have opinions on everything. Yes, we do. And we will talk about most things. Most things. So yes. uh we want to make this for y'all. And uh yeah. So until next time, stay safe. Don't leave money on the table. And keep those wheels a turning. <laughs>